Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel coincides with the second Sunday of the Holy 50 Days. And the 50 Days is divided into two parts. The first 40 until the Feast of Ascension, and the last 10 days is until the Feast of the Pentecost. And that's why we call it the Holy 50, or the Holy Pentecost days. Last Sunday was the Sunday of Thomas, the Sunday of faith, unless you believe without eyes. Because Thomas was trying to touch and see for him to believe. And our Lord said, Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Today's Gospel from the Gospel of St. John chapter 6, he speaks about the bread of life. And next week will be the water of life, then the light of life. He says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The second Sunday of the Pentecost is about the bread of life, the communion. In the, our Orthodox Church, communion is the sacrament of all sacraments. It's the sacrament that when we eat the body of Christ and drink the blood of Christ, we dwell in him and he in us. The sacrament of communion in our church is not a symbol because he is truly the bread of life. And whoever eats my flesh and drink my blood has life in him. And even if he dies, shall not die forever. The sacrament of communion is our church practices since the beginning of the ages till now. The eighth day. And with the eighth day, we eat from the tree of life. As early as Genesis, eating from the tree of life. The tree of life, there was an, a cherubim placed with a flamed sword to prevent anyone from eating from the tree of life because Adam and Eve, the earth, were cursed because of them. But after the cross and our Lord have bore the curse on his head through the thorns, the curse is lifted and now we can approach eating from the tree of life, which is the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. However, the sacrament of communion is not a cult, is not magic. It's not like we are saying, you will taste meat and you will taste blood. No. You will still continue to taste bread and you will still continue to taste wine However, 
they are farther from the real, the real truth. The real truth is you are eating perfectly the body of Christ and you are drinking perfectly the blood of Christ, even though the material itself did not change. And that's very essential to our faith. The communion to us is not a symbol is a true body of Christ and a true blood of Christ. While other denominations may think of it as a symbol, it's very clear from the gospel of today when they started to murmur and complain and saying the Jews complained about him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then? that he says, I have come down from heaven. Jesus therefore answered and said, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. If this is were a symbol, our Lord would have easily said, Come back. I was just speaking metaphorically. Our Lord was speaking the truth that the bread that I give you is truly my flesh, and the chalice I'm asking you to drink from is my blood. Although he did this sacrament the day before the cross, he was spiritually slaughtering himself to offer the body of Christ on the plan of the crucifixion that to occur the next day. And after resurrection, we continue to eat from the bread of life. And that will be our intention from now on until we go to heaven. We are living in a resurrected state with the risen Lord. And every day we come to the church, we re-celebrate Easter, we re-celebrate resurrection, and we eat the resurrected Lord and we drink his blood. Not anymore just as done past in the 2000 years before but it's a real event happening every single liturgy and that's what i wish you all know every time we celebrate liturgy we cere celebrate the resurrected lord and we celebrate truly the body of christ and the blood of christ every time we celebrate liturgy we are actually eating and drinking the same sacrament that our Lord have perfected on Holy Thursday. And we come and we believe that unless we are drawn by the Father, we cannot eat and, clo and come closer to the cross. So when he says, I am the bread of life, he speaks about many things. One, this is the sacrament, without it, we are dead. Two, this is the sacrament, without it, we are in separation from God. Three, this is the sacrament that unites us and make God dwell in us and we dwell in him. This is the sacrament that we were prevented from until the cross. And when the cross occurred and the salvation perfected and the curse was taken away and our Lord tasted death in the flesh on the ninth hour, at that time, every time we eat his body and we drink his blood, we are in him and he is in us. And that's why our church celebrates communion and we live by the body and blood. Our church, even in the hardest times, in the most martyrdom times, never stayed away from communion. As a matter of fact, a lot of those martyrs would come, get communion and be ready for martyrdom. Now, a lot of people are still murmuring, is it truly the body, is it truly the blood of Christ? 
and I submit to you at the time of the liturgy when the deacon inside the altar prays and says, Worship God in fear and trembling. And every single one, including the priest or the bishop, will bow down. Then the priest will start praying, saying, Let your Holy Spirit dwell in us and this holy, these holies of yours to change them into your holy body and holy blood. And at this holy moment, the Holy Spirit, with the request and prayers of the humble priest, come and dwell on bread and wine to change them into body and blood. A sacrament means an invisible act under the signs of a visible act. The visible act is bread and wine and a priest. And the invisible act is the real actor, is the Holy Spirit. And what we don't see is the true body and true blood of our Lord. Do not try to look for proteins or blood cells. This is not magic. Sacrament meaning believing in what we don't see, but realizing the major spiritual, graceful effect of the body and blood of our Lord. So, during the second Sunday of the Holy 50 days, we celebrate the bread of life. What we eat, the angels cannot open their eyes and see. What we taste, the archangels cannot actually see. So with what type of conduct we supposed to be before, during, and after liturgy? If we are really approaching a sacrament that even angels cannot approach or see. Please think more every time you come to liturgy what the angels are doing when you are truly approaching the body and blood of our Lord. Glory be to God forever. Amen.